Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my shed on BC. Uh, got a little bit on this weekend, and I haven't had a chance to get behind the camera for some time. And next weekend, it's going to be stop taking a model ex engineering exhibition at my club, which will be quite interesting. So this is what we have today ahead of us. A couple of things I've taken the little fluffy sock off the end of the condenser mic, just to see if I can't get a little bit more volume. Still got a few people complaining about the uh, volume and the audio. I do have an audio recorder, but I just don't have the time to do the editing. And you've got to appreciate I run a full-time business as well as sharpening these tools and making a video out of it. And I find editing takes up quite a bit of my time, sometimes a couple of hours. And Windows 11 has changed my old Windows Photos program, so I can no longer use it as an editor and the replacement is bloody rubbish. Anyway, that's just my opinion. So the sock is off the microphone, let's hope we get a little bit more volume. Um, things that have happened since the last weekend, I've got a nice piece of heavy angle, a bit of 150 by 150 by 12 or 13 or inch, half inch, whatever, and that will be the start of the motor mount bracket to get the Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder up and going. So there'll be a future video on that. Uh, that's sturdy enough to be a good bracket. I don't even think I'll have to gusset it. I may if I get vibration, but somehow I doubt it. That's the toughest type of shit. That's quite a good piece of steel. Um, annular cutters to sharpen from customers. It really makes me laugh. <coughs> Excuse me. They buy the cheap, cheap tool shop cutters and bring it to me to regrind. Well, why don't you buy a good cutter to bloody start with? But that's one customer. He's pulled out of the surface quite early. So it's only just a little bit of a touch-up. These come from the steel fabricator customer of mine, and I'll zoom you in with the other camera on this one later on. With all annular cutters, when you're re-entering a hole after clearing a sport, you've got to be careful there's no little chips down the bottom because you engage the chip under a tooth and it's like a skateboard. The cutter can't cut, and you're just increasing and increasing the pressure until you blow the side out of the cutter. So that'll be a cut off gullet and a regrind. Um, 20 mil long series cutter is probably about $60 to buy, so it's worth the effort to sharpen. And uh, these two here, uh, first time offenders coming back, although that one looks like I may have reground it, this one not, so I've got that work to do. And I've got seven sling saws to do. These come from a manufacturing customer who uses them for slitting. I can't give you anything about the operation, it's proprietary. They're Australian brand capital cutting tools. I know the operation they go into and they are using a big old horizontal mill which is as rigid as hell, but they do quite an arduous job. A very sensible manufacturer. They're pulled at the first sign of any tooth wear. Matter of fact, you can just barely see the wear. So as soon as they start to sing in the work, they're taken out of the job. And one interesting fact today, I'll zoom in on these later on too. Two of these have been put on a cold seal sharpening machine. And I can tell that because they have a hook rake. It gives you one hell of a sharp cutter. But as is evidenced here, it also weakens the cutter and the tooth's blown out. Tooth teeth damaged here. I'll sharpen that cutter and point it out to him that I'll try and bring it back to standard specs, although I don't think I'll gullet grinder, I just reduce the amount of clearance that it's given uh, and provided he doesn't use it for absurdly hard work he may get several more runs out of it yet. But I think eventually with this group of cutters I will start having to gullet them. You can see where they've been dish ground to give a little bit of clearance and provided you don't come down past that you can still keep using them and the job is not diameter sensitive I believe so there's quite a little bit of work there. I've had a bit more thinking about this particular fellow. This is a dovetail cutter that was given to me by Marcus to regrind. And the Clarkson instructions are just, I cannot believe that you'd even put it in a book. Although I have been thinking, they may have omitted one sentence, use the shaft extension, which gets the wheel out further over the table and I may be able to do it. So given sufficient time later on today, I might have a crack at that. There's been um, the owner, or Marcus himself, had a go at sharpening the cutter by using a 
last time with a wheel through the flute here to grind the front edge that you shouldn't really touch unless it's really badly butchered and you should do it on a silver cutter grinder but the effect is the cutting edge is now curved instead of straight. I can still grind it on the straight but I think that may give a slightly bellied um, dovetail but we'll see. I will spend another hour or so on it trying to nut out the geometry. Holding it between centres was quite good and rigid but I just could not get the work envelope with the particular class of machine. So I'll try it in my work head today. And I've put a little packing strip under the work head so I can swivel it on top of the table. But ultimately, you can buy these in from China for $120. Uh, and this is a no-name brand, nothing extra onto it except the part number. So I don't think it's a good old Pony or American brand. So if it's going to take too much time, I'll just buy them in a cheap cover and leave it at that. Anyway, welcome back to In The Shed. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't been here before. I've got a fair bit more on the go. Uh, next weekend, as I said, a stock take, and that is a bit horrendous. We have about four and a half thousand items minimum on the shelf, and the quantities float quite a bit, and the suppliers float as we have availability problems. Uh, I think it's going to take me quite a while. So I'll bring you in uh, if I get a chance later today or during the week and show you what we do uh, in our everyday business selling industrial supplies and welding equipment. All the best for now, and I'll bring the other camera in for a zoom.